Greetings this Tuesday morning. It is November 2nd. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. Delighted to share in these moments of devotion. Today it is technically called All Souls Day or the Day of the Faithful Departed. A day we remember those we've loved, those who have gone before us in faith, those who we carry and grieve in our hearts and their loss. Time to remember, time to take note. Different cultures, different um, people ex offer this time as a time of expression of, again, devotion, of coming together as family, of being um, sensitive to each other in, in our grieving. So we open our hearts with the same um, idea in mind as we reflect on our prayers today. And so we begin. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but citizens together with the saints and members of the household of God. O oh God, let our mouths proclaim your praise and all your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Today we will pray Canticle B, a song of pilgrimage. Before I ventured forth, even while I was very young, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. In the four courts of the temple I asked for her, and I will seek her to the end. From first blossom to early fruit, she has been the delight of my heart. My foot has kept firmly to the true path, diligently from my youth have I pursued her. I inclined my ear a little and received her. I found for myself much wisdom and became adept to her. To the one who gives me wisdom will I give glory, for I have resolved to live according to her way. From the beginning I gained courage from her, therefore I will not be forsaken. In my inmost being I have been stirred to seek her, therefore have I gained a good possession. In my reward the Almighty has given me the gift of language, and with it will I offer praise to God. Our scripture today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at the 24th verse. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and then and now is near when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those he hear will live, for just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be astonished at this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. probably one of the great mysteries of life, isn't it? To not, to not know the fullness of what happens to us after death. Um, I often think of that. Um, we all have our images, we all have heard the stories, we all have heard the, the ideas and the hopes and the dreams of um, what the afterlife is awaiting us. Um, the one thing I think through it all that we can depend on is that we are loved, um, forever loved by God, that nothing can separate us from that love, not even death, um, and that we can be assured of. And it's, it's about trusting in that love and allowing that love to, to grain in our hearts this day. So when we think about today, we think about our experiences. Um, and this particular day in the church's history, um, we remember those elect, those people who have walked before us in faith, those people of um, sometimes heroic sanctity and sometimes not so much heroic sanctity, but were called with, with 
with great gratitude and we recall their lives and their, um, their reflection of God's great love for us. So we um, remember those people in our life whom we, we remember today, those people who have, again, shown us um, and given us direction, give us courage to, to face our own journeys and our own struggles, to know that others have done the same, um, that we are a lot more like the saints than we, um, than we could imagine. And that today, as we remember those we've lost, um, and we may still be grieving their loss, and to allow ourselves that time and place um, to move from grieving to transformation, to move from grieving to an embracing of, of uh, faithful reality that, that God is with us even in death, and that our loved ones become a part of a a greater communion of saints and life. So we hold their memories in our hearts this day, um, especially those we've lost this past year. Give ourselves time to reflect on their life and to find ways of celebrating it, find ways of living um, with greater love and devotion to our God. So we pray, God, glory, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ever ask or imagine. Glory God to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And I will close with a colic for the day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the body of Christ. You are the maker of all believers. Grant to the faithful departed the unsearchable benefits of the passion of your son, that on the day of his appearing they may be manifested as your children through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So hold tightly to those who you've loved and lost. Know that their presence is with you and that they are loving you along with God to form that wonderful communion of saints, the faithful, the believing that we are not alone and that God loves us through and through. May we carry that fact in our hearts this day as we remember those we've loved and lost. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Have a good day.